Race five of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup in the winter wonderland that is Germany's Hochsauerland. We're at the track of Winterberg, entered as a permanent facility in the early 1970s and has been the home of many a close finish ever since. We get into the second and deciding heat of this fifth race of the World Cup and the European Championship medals are up for grabs as well. And after a tightly packed first heat, the top five covered by just nine hundredths of a second. Jacqueline Lerling, the world champion, a European champion on this track in 2017, is in third place after the first heat. She's won two of the last three years on this track. Elena Nikitina has been in the medals, but not for a couple of seasons, and has never claimed gold here in Winterberg, but she lies in second place, 400s ahead of Lerling, 200s off the lead. The defending European champion is chasing the world champion, and last year's winner in Winterberg, Tina Hermann of Germany. For the margin, 200s of a second is ridiculously tight. And if Tina Hermann claims gold, it will be her first European Championship gold medal. So Tina Herman, Elena Nikitina, Janine Flock, Jacqueline Lerling and Hannah Neiser. Three Germans, an Austrian and a Russian are battling for the medals ahead of Kimberly Boss with Liz Meyer of Canada, the best non-European. Laura Dees in eighth, the head of Kim Marmans, Anna Fernstedt, Yula Kanakina very tightly together. Then Alessia Kripp, the returning Katie Ulender ahead of a tie between Ashley Pitaway and Elena Frolova. 100th between Maddie Smith and Kendall Wessenberg. It's tight all the way down. Since the 2015 Worlds won by Lizzie Arnold, every winner here in Winterberg is still competing. And almost all of them will have intimate knowledge of this 1330 meter track. Starts off very gently. A good sprint start definitely helps you here, but it's not the be all and the end all. Out of the new start building into this little dink here, corner zero. Try not to get too high up that wall down into the old turn one. When they built the new start, they didn't rename the corners. Corner two, Omega turn, full 270 degrees. Corner three, we always say how slow these are, but listen to the wind whistle. And then here, the acceleration through corner five there. Dramatic, isn't it? Little dink in six, sevens the Kreisel. You can hear yourself slowing there in the two pressure Kreisel. Eight, down to the big corner, nine. Sarah Vimmer with the track record from the Europa Cup race here in November. Corner 11, huge double pressure right-hander. 12, 13, and the final corner, 14. Still on it, going uphill, still on it. And across the line, rolling across the line in uh, a few cases. Well, there's Janine Flock, our World Cup points leader. She's had three wins and a bronze medal so far this season. And Katie Ulender back to the track where she made her debut in November 2004. There are athletes in the field who had not started primary school when Katie Ulender finished in sixth in the World Cup race. Not her first ever skeleton race, her first World Cup race. November 2004. So here are 20 athletes that go in reverse order of their first heat performance. Our rookie Jacqueline Leberge of Canada unfortunately missing the cut. So Agat Bessar kicks us off with Ndia Tarauda, Kendall Wessenberg and the rest following until we get down to our five-way battle for the medals. With Tina Herman, 900s ahead of Hannah Neiser. It's almost a dead heat. Race five of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup. We're racing behind closed doors in Winterberg, Germany. And Agat Bessar gets our second and deciding heat underway. Pour la France. <laughs> 19th best start, 20th at the bottom of the track in the field of 21. She just eased Canadian rookie Jacqueline Leberge out of the second heat. And she starts 581, that's 600 slower than her first heat. 
It looks at the end of heat one as though the track maybe didn't quite carry the speed that it had earlier on. But as the afternoon progresses, it's now 4 p.m. The sun is down below the hills here. The temperature will drop quickly. Track freshly glazed by a brand new spritz between the heats. So Agat Bessar with the best of the ice. Top speed so far, 91.9 kilometers, 91.1 kilometers an hour. Now you can see how much speed you pick up lower down the track, 95 k's. Mind you, 100 kilometers an hour is 62 miles an hour. Little bit of snow drifting in, 124, big speed in the finished corner and across the line, 59.30. Well, we have seen many races here in Winterberg affected by snow. And now there's actually more snow falling than there was at any stage so far in the day. And that is starting to look like a little bit of a gritty, nasty, grisly, drizzly snow coming in. So we'll wait and see what happens. I get Bessar skidding between four and five. A little late off five, down into six. The five-six crossover is pretty tricky. Very short, even on a skeleton sled. Well, the jury in these conditions, as ever, have two jobs to do. Big smile from our leader. To make the race safe and to make the race fair. Safe should be pretty straightforward here, but depending on what the weather does, our jury may have some decisions to make. And Dia Torada of Lavillen started her World Cup career at the beginning of this season. So this is World Cup number five for us this year and for her ever. And she started with a bronze medal. 5.74. She was off at the very beginning of the first race of the season in Segulda in Latvia. And absolutely the best of the ice and a blinding first run to put her in third place and she managed to hold on to it she hasn't scaled those heights since then a little more sensible couple of 11ths and a 15th so far which is what you expect from a rookie in their first season out on tour and particularly given one who is as relatively young as endia nice smooth Spoke too soon, smoothish looking run. Six tenths up on Agat Bessar and the best speed at the bottom. 59.06. Now that's four tenths, 4200 slower than her first heat. And you can hear the snow coming down on the camera mics like rain. It's coming down at a decent rate and it's it may be that our first heat will end up deciding things, but we'll wait and see what the weather does. So often prevaricates here. Pretty much say that in terms of weather, Winterberg is ice racing's equivalent of Spa or the Nürburgring. Little late exit. And a big skid there as she tries to hang on to the sled. It was driving her at that stage, not the other way around. Third of our starters from Modesto, California, Kendall Wessenberg. She's in a tight battle covered by six hundredths of a second with Endia Torada behind her and Maddie Smith in front of her, although behind her waiting to go now. Didn't, didn't come out quite the way it should have done, should it? Kendall Wessenberg going for the USA. Like teammate Katie Ulender, like the Canadians, making her first World Cup start of the season. You can only imagine the frustration, can't you? You make the World Cup team, and then nobody travels. 5.77 getaway in the first heat. 6.30 in the second. Did she get the Steve Holcomb Memorial gust of wind blowing up into the start? Or was there snow? Somewhere affecting the timing beam. Whatever, she's 1.1 seconds back. Now, this doesn't look like a disastrous second slower run. What did I miss? Got the scraping, the helmet on the ice. 
1.1 seconds back still. And Kendall at and the line with a 60.05. Well, that is slightly perplexing. 6.30 compared to 5.7. That's six hundredths of a second. But to come down 1.1 seconds slower... I have to say, not sure where that 1.1 seconds went away, whether she's made an adjustment to the sled that has just really cost her early on, not sure. So Kendall Wessenberg drops to third spot. Down and done for the first World Cup of the season. Hasn't yielded what she would have hoped. Madeleine Smith of Great Britain next up. Madeline in her 20th World Cup start. The 25-year-old World Cup best, a couple of fifth-place finishes. She's learning to adapt to a Bromley sled this year and being her own team of one. A little bit of uh, moral and physical support from uh, the British team. She's effectively sliding as an independent. 5.66 get away, gets a little bit of corner one. She started 5.59 in the first heat. So that's 700 slower as well. Her advantage over India Torada from the first heat was six hundredths of a second. It's out to 18 hundredths. Maddie with a slightly disappointing first run. Needs to try and dial herself in here and claw her way up the order. 22 hundreds up at the Chrysal, building speed. 27 hundreds up. The gap is continuing to grow. Maddie Smith starting to drive away now. And she rolls across the finish line, hanging on for the speed. 58-84 slide to come across 28 hundreds of a second in front of India Toralda. So she added 22 hundreds to her first heat advantage. Nearly a quarter of a second better. 58-84 compared to 58-62 in the first heat. So the track is not as quick and more and more of this gritty icy snow will be lying on the flatter surfaces and that will act a little bit like a break. Over the bump, high in corner 11, has to drive it down and finish curve. The final pressure, it's a two-pressure corner plus a bit, and it's the bit that rolls you across the line. So Maddie Smith hanging on for the speed, takes the lead. And she's trying to get ahead of her teammate, Ashley Pittaway. Ashley, 18 hundreds up from the first heat. Beg your pardon, can't count. 2200s up. I was adding not subtracting. 20 years old now, youth Olympic gold medalist in Lillehammer Hammer 2016. And learned to slide in Koenig today. Good run through corner zero. 550 start. So 1600s quicker than her teammate. Half a second up, Ashley Pittaway. Thirty-eight hundreds up from the start, out to fifty-nine hundreds. Ninety-one point four kilometres an hour, quicker than Maddie Smith. Kendall Wessenberg of the USA was fastest at the bottom, no longer. Pittaway is quicker. Look at the bullet form. Head down. Feeling the love from the sled here. 68 hundreds up, second best speed, but she's going to take the lead by a very substantial margin. Eight tenths of a second, 58.27. So she is the first slider who has gone quicker than their first heat. So, Ashley Pittaway, 58.27, would have left her in 12th place after the first heat, rather than where she found herself in 15th. But that is a good improvement on the second heat for the 20-year-old. 
14th place she finished here last year. Looks like she could be on for a PB in her 11th, 10th World Cup start. Ashley Pittaway leads from Maddie Smith and Endia Tarauda. Five down, 15 to go in Winterberg. In the first of our two heats, race five of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup, we had a heat for 15th place. Elena Frolova of Russia was tied by Ashley Pitaway. Pitaway has just had her shot. Now Frolova will try and break the tie in her advantage. She's going to need a big run. 5-4-0, a fraction quicker than the 43 in the first heat. And that gives her an added 10th over Ashley Pitaway of Great Britain, but Pitaway has a very clean run. Gaps out to 1700s. Not a bad transition, five to six. And the best speed in the Chrysler. 91.5, one tenth of a kilometer quicker than Pitaway. It all adds up, tiny increments. She's 1700s up and still the best speed, still quicker than her rival. At least equal fastest. All big height in 11. Gaps down to a 10th. Third best speed. She should just about have the lead at the line by a hundredth. It is a hundredth. 58.26 to the 58.27. Over 2,660 metres of ice. There is one hundredth of a second between Elena Frolova and Ashley Pitaway. So for over World Cup rookie this season. Only had a couple of races here, one in the Intercontinental Cup and one in Europa Cup. So it doesn't have a huge amount of experience on this track. And one hundredth in front. 13th race one in Eagles, her World Cup best. She needs two spots to equal that. Next up, Katie Ulender, the 2012 Women's Skeleton World Champion, a multiple Olympian, multiple race winner in the World Cup. 11 wins, 10 further podiums, and she was sixth on her World Cup debut here in Winterberg back in November 2004. Her last World Cup appearance before today was in January 2018, before the Winter Olympic Games. That was in Koenigsegg. 5.49 the start, 400s quicker than her first heat. 700s the deficit to Elena Frolova. She was 600s ahead from the first heat, so she needs speed further down the track. Gaps out to 1100, second best speed. One tenth of a kilometre slower than Frolova and Pitaway. Top speed at the next track, 95.8, she's 95.9. Ulender should start to close the gap here. It may have been a few years since she slid Winterberg, but it hasn't changed much. She's got good experience on this track. Winner here in the 2006-07 season, and she has the lead, 58-28. 200 slower, the last three sleds have come down within 200s of each other. 58-28 for Katie Ulender, 27 for Ashley Pitaway, and 26 for Elena Frolova. And Katie Ulender has the lead with 13 sleds remaining. Well, she has had all sorts of injuries over her career. And Katie Ulender, the ultimate fighter. We're hearing now as well that teammate Kendall Wessenberg will have a second run. I had to say, I did suspect that something had gone awry with the timing issues because that didn't look like a second slower than anything. Katie Ulander moves into the leader's box ahead of a woman she's never Katie met, Ulander. Elena Frolova. Oh, probably still doesn't know what she looks like. May not until next season either. What with the COVID masks. Next up, Alessia Kripa, the Italian 
eighth fastest starter in the field, came down in 13th place. Her advantage over the veteran Katie Ulander, just six hundredths of a second. Alessia Kripper, sixth World Cup of her career. Katie Ulander in the 84th this weekend. A 5.47 getaway, that's right where she was in the first heat. Alessia drew start draw number one, at least her coach did. She was very excited to be leading the field off. Still ahead of Ulander. Gap is tiny though. Maintains six hundredths of a second. That's what it was from the first heat. So on this heat, they are absolutely dead level. Ooh, a little bump away, only three hundredths up as she plunges down through nine into 11. Ooh, 11 to 12, 12 to 13, a little rocky, 100 back. Ulender is going to lead at the line. There's not enough speed for Alessia Kripper, and she drops four places. 1100s back, and that is enough to drop her behind Elena Frolova and Ashley Pitaway. 1100s of a second. So 58, 45, and it all went away in corner 11. Little bump there, down into five. That didn't help. But from 11, drops down into the gutter. Centrifugal force pushes her up onto the bump. Sled is clear of the ice there. You're hanging upside down. Gravity's a strange bedfellow, isn't it? And from there on, she was steering hard through the labyrinth, and that's what took away the speed. So one Italian felled by Katie Ulander. Let's see if the woman from Colorado can also overhaul Valentina Margaglio. She was in 12th place after the first heat. Her advantage over Katie Ulender is larger, 1400s. And Valentina with a 525 was the fastest starter in the first heat. 529, and that may yet be the fastest start in the second heat as well, unless Elena Nikitina has something to say about it. Top speed, so she carries the speed away from the line and all the way down to the 50 meter clock. 3900s up. Still living on that starting advantage. 4300s up. Their speed into the Chrysler. Shoulders up a little, head up a little. You watch the experienced sliders there molded down as if they've melted onto the sled. And shoulders up mean you're dragging your shoulders through the wind, more of a frontal area. Across the line, she's going to have the fourth or fifth best speed, and she has a very big lead, 57.96. 2400s better than her first heat. Well, her first heat was a little bit of a hit-and-miss affair. 57.96 would have left her in ninth rather than 12th after the first run. So Valentina Margaglio, bronze medalist in the World Championships in February in Altenburg. And that was a better looking run. She still needs to get those shoulders molded down onto the sled, reduce that frontal area. That'll help her with a fraction more top speed. Best here, 11th place in 2020 for Valentina Margaglio. She leads with 11 to go. Could be on for a PB because the next three sleds are close to her and covered by just 400s. Yuli Kanakina of Russia, 1200s ahead of Margaglio. Didn't start as quickly as the Italian. She was 11th after the first heat. Anakina, the 25-year-old, won World Cup medal in her career, Altenburg 2019. Starts 5.29, so she keeps her advantage alive, 1,200s. Out to 1,700s, that is great momentum. We've had some 
very familiar disciplines, lots of track and field athletes, lots of soccer and football players, American football players make it into skeleton. Yuri Kanakina comes from ballet. Ashley Pitaway, trampolinist. There are some strange paths that lead you into skeleton. Not sure any of them are directly connected. Just three hundreds in the bank for Yulia Kanakina. Can she hang on ahead of Valentina Margaglio? Yes! By the tiniest measurable margin. One hundredth of a second. And that was one hundredth of a second that she was quicker than her first heat as well. If she'd only set the same time as her first heat, they would have been tied with 10 to go. But Yulia will finish no worse than 11th. Her best race here in Winterberg was an eighth place finish two seasons ago. And she may yet have a chance to make it into the top 10. It'll skid five to six. And here in 11, it'll bump. Well, next up, Kendall Wessenberg of the USA. So, Caleb Smith again with the sled, second time of asking on this second run. There was definitely an issue with the clocks for Kendall. 577 first start. The second one was given as 6.3 seconds. Unless you fall over, that's a non secretary So let's see where we get here. She was in 18th place after the first heat. 5.80, that is much more like it. So Kendall Wessenberg gets a second bite at the second run. At a corner two to three. Climbing over the brow and into four, and then dropping back down slowly into corner five. Shooting down the hill. Corner five doesn't really look like it on the camera, but when you're watching from the inside, it's a, a definite two steer corner for most athletes. One steer the Germans have managed to achieve. Much better looking run for Kendall Wessenberg. Ninth fastest start, she's up to seventh place at the moment, out of the nine sleds, which would leave her effectively where she started. Seventh at the line with three behind her. So she started in 18th in the second heat with two behind her. And that means she has moved up ahead of Maddie Smith, who was her closest rival, just 100th ahead of her in the first heat. And Kendall has overhauled Maddie Smith by three tenths of a second. So, unusually, Kendall Wessenberg with three runs down at Winterberg in the two-heat race. So, like training, two days with the potential to do three runs per day. A little bit more pressure on the line, though, with the cameras and the lights on you. So, Kendall Wessenberg comes across the line in seventh of our ten sleds so far. And a great looking uh, belly pan on the sled. Yula Kanakina leads from Valentina Margario and Katie Ulender. 10 down, 10 to go here in Winterberg. Into the top 10 in Winterberg, Germany, and in a tight battle bye, 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 for bye, bye. supremacy. Anna Fernstedt of the Czech Republic. Current leader is Yulia Kanakina of Russia. Fernstedt was a whopping two hundredths of a second in front of the Russian. Kanakina leads Valentina Margaglio by one hundredth. So effectively, we've got five sleds covered by four or five hundredths of a second. And for our slider from the Czech Republic, who grew up in the German program, knows this track well. She is now in her 13th. World Cup race as a Czech slider, the same number she started for Germany. Good exit from Anna Fernstedt. She's still in the red from the start. 5.70 compared to the 5.29 of Kanakina. Gaps come down from 53 to 2100. She's going to be in the green. She is in the green. 129.2, big speed from the Czech slider rolls across the finish line. 
57-89, two tenths clear of Yulia Kanakina. And her horse came home without her. Obviously, she's hurt her wrist a bit, rolling off the finish line. And like a number of the German sliders, Anna may not have the fastest start in the field, but boy, this woman can drive the ice well. Look here in 11, low after the first pressure, but takes that second pressure late. And again here, late exit as well. Now, she lost the sled, but she had crossed the finish line by the time she lost it. And that means that that should count as a legal run. Well, Jens Morgenstern and his crew here in Winterberg have had a lot of work this week. There's Jens at the top of the track to keep this track active in heavy snowfall conditions. And they've done another sparkling job. Just two hundreds ahead of Anna Fernstedt from Belgium, Kim Marmans. Such a tight battle. The 24-year-old Belgian finished in 10th place last year. She's ninth of the first heat. That'll be a Winterberg PB for her. And 5.41 starts 2,900 quicker than Fernstedt. Like Anna, Kim Marmon started sliding in Berchtes Garden on the Koenigsee track, coached by the Germans. Raced for Germany in the lower categories. 2700 up. The gap has come down by a tenth. Thirteen hundreds of a second. The gap is tiny. It was only two hundreds at the line after the first heat. Who is going to be in front? Fernstedt or Marmons? It's two hundreds now. Third best speed. Is that enough? Could even be a dead heat at the line. She's behind. You can hear Vili, the track announcer, giving it in English and German for the teams, as he would normally do for the fans as well. Three hundreds behind. Kim Marman shakes her head. Where did that go? Oh, any number of uh, tiny little adjustments down the track can make that difference. Good start for Kim. 5.41, 200 is better than her previous. Nice load into the settle. And again, take a look in 11. Controls that second pressure well. Good looking run. Anna Fernstedt leads Kim Marmons by 300s. Julia Kanakina two tenths back in third. Next up, Great Britain's Laura Dees. Laura on a return to form. The 32-year-old Olympic bronze medalist from 2018. One win and four podiums in World Cup racing. Her best here back in 2015, a fourth place finish. Last year, a 13th place. So eighth of the first heat is a lot better. 537, 700 quicker than her first start. And the little gritty snowfall that we had early in the run seems to have stopped, which means the track won't be getting any worse. 5700s up on Anna Fernstedt. She started 537. Anna started 5.7.0, so 33 of those hundreds were from the start alone. She had 1,400s in hand at the end of the first run. That's down to 2,900s from 57. This is going to be tight. She was half a second up, one third of the way down the track. And this is going to be very close indeed. Only the 10th best speed. Fenchlet's going to hold the lead. And Laura Dees drops to third. No. Second place. I beg your pardon. Fifth place. So 2200s back from 5700s up. She lost three quarters of a second to Anna Fenchlet. So Laura Dees with a 58.25 in the end. The top half was good, but here it's all getting away from her. Look, she's fully inverted on the exit of 11. 11.12, 11, 
She's hitting all the take-ons hard, coming off late. Watch the body bounced around. That's all energy leaving the sled, and that's why there was no speed at the end. And then she gets swept up the wall by the centrifugal force. And that's an uncomfortable landing at the end of the run. So Laura Dees, instead of moving up, slips down four spots. She's fourth with seven to go. And in seventh place is the best of our North American sliders. The only one who's been in Europe since pre-Christmas. Liz Meyer for Canada. Elizabeth raced in uh, Innsbruck in the two races where she's staying with husband Benny and his family. Seventh and fifth place finishes. 5.39 getaway. Finding her form, finding her speed, relearning the tracks, the sliding, the sled. After a year away. Elizabeth Meyer. 40th World Cup race for her, of course she does not count in the European Championships, so she alone in the top 10 is invisible for European medals and points, uh, positions at least. But she is in the lead over Anna Fernstedt, but that was 63 hundreds, it remains 49. She's losing time, but less time than we saw from Laura Dees. Gotta keep on top of the sled. All the way through to the line, fifth best speed, but she's got enough in the bank. She will lead at the line, 2700s, 200s quicker than her first run. So Anna Fernstedt with a big improvement on her first run, picks off Kim Marmons and Laura Dees, but Liz Meyer stops her in her tracks. Elizabeth Meyer for Canada has the race lead with six sleds remaining. Three World Cup wins, nine further podiums in her career, plus Baby Hendrix, born around 15 months ago. Brother-in-law Sammy raced this morning for Austria. Husband Benny races in two-man on Saturday and four-man on Sunday. The Koenigsklasse is back. Kimberly Boss of the Netherlands next up. What a season this young lady has had. Second, third, second, and second her season. By the way, she's looking for a name for her sled. Currently, it's the Dutch for Lion. But if you're on social media, find Kimberly Boss and make a pleasant and or humorous suggestion for the name for her sled. 1900s off the lead from the first heat. 5.51, a fraction slower at the start. Drops her into the clutches of Elizabeth Meyer. A tenth behind. This could be a tight battle at the bottom. Kimberly Boss. Struggled with injury last year, didn't race here in Winterberg. Gonna save her energies for the World Championships. But this year has been an entirely different season, never off the podium. That comes to an end here, you feel sure. 1900s behind. This is gonna drop her into second place behind Elizabeth Meyer, it does. Well, that'll see her no worse than seventh place, no worse than sixth in the European Championships. And for Kimberly Boss, ninth in the Europeans in Segulda last year. She will remain second in the points standings. Maybe not, maybe Tina Herman might get to her. A little bit untidy, couple of errors creeping in. This is effectively home ice for the Dutch slider in that it is the nearest to the Netherlands. Whatever else, she is having a huge season. So too is this young lady. We get now into our battle for the medals. Elizabeth Meyer leads from Kimberly Boss and Anna Fernstedt with five to go. Hannah Neiser of Germany leads off our final five sleds. Race five of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup in Winterberg, Germany. 
And for Nizer, who comes from the Winterberg club, from BSC Winterberg, this is a great opportunity. The top five covered by 900. This is pick a name from a hat as your winner. Nizer, 561 to start, 100th slower than her previous start. Elizabeth Meyer is our race leader. The Canadian started over two tenths quicker than Nizer, but that gap is now down to only 1100. From her position here, Nizer could easily be in the medals. Second best speed. Fastest of all there was Anna Fernstedt. Still closing down Liz Meyer, down to two hundreds of a second, and here's where the changeover happens. She'll come out of 11 in the green, and this is the home run for the Germans. 11, 12, 13, and 14. Best speed of all for Hannah Neiser. She leads at the line. Is that enough for a medal? 17 hundreds of a second, the advantage. So, Hannah Neiser with the race lead. The margins are so tiny here. She was 1,800 ahead of Elizabeth Meyer after the first heat. She is 1,700 ahead of Elizabeth Meyer after the second. And the question now is, who else has speed in the tank? So Hannah Neiser, the race leader, with four to go. The yellow jersey of our World Cup points leader, Janine Flock. Gold and gold in Segulda, bronze and gold in Innsbruck. The 31-year-old is our World Cup points leader. She's a two-time European champion. She has never been off a European championship podium in her career. Six hundreds separate her from gold. 5.52, 300 slower than her first start. Janine Flock has among the faster starts of the top order. Elena Nikitina not counting. 15 hundreds ahead of Hannah Neiser. She was 3 hundreds ahead from the first heat. 13 hundreds, the gap's coming down fractionally at the Kreisel. Second best speed, quicker than Neiser, not as quick as Fernstedt. Best speed of all for Janine Flock. Is she driving her way into a fourth win of the season and a third European Championship gold? Best speed at the bottom, best run so far for Janine Flock. 57, 65, 100 of a second slower than her first heat. That is the fastest run in the second heat. Is that enough? Three to go. Well, Janine Flock has the advantage by nearly a quarter of a second over Hannah Neiser, and maybe that's the measurement we should be looking at. Was 300s in front of her rival, is now 1900s more in front. And don't forget, Janine was tied in the bronze medal position, only 600s off gold. So she takes the lead from Hannah Neiser, but Neiser's Winterberg teammate is next up. Jacqueline Lurling. Lurling the winner here in 2017 of the European Championship. She won here in 2018 as well. Tina Herman beat Mimi Reneva and Janine Flock to fill the podium last season. So can Jacka fight back? Tied with Janine Flock, 600s off the lead after the first of our two heats. 25-year-old Olympic silver medalist, our World Cup champion from last year. Starting in 5-6-0, 200 slower than her first start. And 
She slow, starts a little slower than Janine, as she did in the first heat. They were exactly tied on time at the bottom of the run. And like Janine, the form is impeccable. Jacka knows this track inside out. This is where she started sliding. Still where she has a great opportunity. Eight hundreds behind. The gap has not closed by much. She needs the best speed. She's not closing. She's got the same speed, a little more than Janine. Not enough, not enough. She's in second. She will not win this year. Janine Flock leads with two to go, guaranteed at least a bronze medal. So Janine Flock continues never off a European Championship podium. Ah, Sharda indeed, what a shame. But it is not necessarily over. Janine Flock leads from Jacqueline Lurling and Hannah Neiser. Too much of corner zero, she was steering away from it. Big settle there again as she runs out of the grooves just to get her body perfectly positioned on this seesaw set of runners underneath the sled. Oh, a little high there in 11. All those tiny little bumps and ripples just take the odd hundredth away. Jacka could be in the medals. Trusses of Botna for Elena Nikitina of Russia, the European champion. Her advantage over leader Flock, 400s. Her disadvantage to the first heat leader, Tina Herman, 200s of a second. It is a dead heat, effectively. 5.24, she finds another 200s at the start. Almost nobody has improved on their start. And she has. If she'd found another 200s in the first heat, she'd have been tied for the lead. Now she has 4700s in hand over Janine Flock. But only the fifth best speed. Nikita knows how to win a race. She won the European Championships on home ice in Segulda last year. The 28-year-old has 10 World Cup wins and eight further podiums. Last time she was on the podium here three years ago in the bronze medal position behind Jacqueline Lurling and Liz Varche, but she leads now with one to go. There will be no European Championship gold for Janine Flock. But Elaine Nikitina, the reigning European champion, guaranteed at least a silver medal. She looks happy with that. I think she should. She's found a tenth on her first run. And that really puts pressure. And that was after a pretty poor dink through corner zero. She pushed away a lot there. There was a lot more going on than would be ideal. And she still found a tenth somewhere. So she leads from Janine Flock and Jacqueline Lurling. Is that the podium? Or can Tina Herman make the difference? Final sled, race five of the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup in Winterberg, Germany. Tina Herman, the Bavarian, two hundredths of a second is her advantage over our current leader, Elena Nikitina. This is the world champion battling the reigning European champion. Herman started 561, 558. She finds 300. She knows that everything counts. Ninth best speed, but it's not the start for which Herman is rightly well known. It is how she finishes the runs. Something about Tina Herman, she has the ability to find wormholes, do something with time and space. 4,500 back. Now she needs to start slicing into the margin. Best speed of all, quicker or as quick as teammate Jacqueline Lurling. 3,300s, down to 1,800s. She's running out of ice. She's got the best line, but I think Nikitina's got it. And Elena Nikitina is the European champion for the second straight 
year. It's her second World Cup win of the season, and she did find enough in the second heat. She wins by six hundredths of a second. Tina Herman could not find enough to make the difference. She is frustrated this season, Herman. Her career-long coach, Dirk Matchens, has left the German program. He's still coaching her individually, but it's not quite the same. And she is just finding this year a mental struggle as well as a physical one. Seventh and third in Segulda, third and fourth in Innsbruck. She'll take her first silver medal of the season here, but the world champion comes up. Comes up a little shy, and Elena Nikitina claims her first win ever in Winterberg in Germany, and she is for the second time our European champion. So Russia with a big day in the Europeans in skeleton. Alexander Tretyakov claimed gold in the European Championships 14 years after he had first won it. And Elena Nikitina goes back to back. She won in Segulda, that was home ice. She wins in Winterberg, that really isn't. Now the accusation will be, well, this is a starter's paradise. Let's see what she does next year. Elena Nikitina wins it from Tina Herman, with Janine Flock taking European bronze, ahead of Jacqueline Lerling and Hannah Neiser, the hometown queens. And Liz Meyer finishes six for Canada, but six in the Europeans will go to Kimberly Boss, ahead of Anna Fernstedt, Kim Marmons, Julia Kanakina, and Valentina Margalio. And behind Maya, the best of the rest of the North, and, uh, North American sliders. 13th place for Katie Ulander on the track. She makes her World Cup reappearance where she made her debut all those years ago. And after that second run, it gave her a slightly uh, better time, more accurate time. Kendall Wessenberg finishes in 17th place. But there is your new European champion. Second verse, same as the first. It is Elena Nikitina of Russia, the reigning European champion who claims her second European gold medal in succession. Well, it's been a fantastically close battle in Winterberg today, and that looks set to continue with two men and women's bobsleigh on Saturday and the four-man bob starting on Sunday. Janine Flock is still our World Cup points leader and Kimberly Boss hangs on ahead of Tina Herman and Jacqueline Lerling, second, third and fourth. Elena Nikitina moves back up to fifth position with that win. She missed the second race in Innsbruck and dropped to seventh place as a result. She continues to work her way back up the order. Liz Meyer now in 13th place in the World Cup standings. Great Britain's Laura Dees, the best of the British sliders in 15th spot. And for North America, for the Americans, Katie Ulander, Kessel we Kendall Wessenberg, scoring their four first points of the season as most of our North American sliders make their World Cup debut for the year here in Winterberg. And they will be here in their European bubbles until the end of the season. Nikitina, Herman and Flock are the European Championship podium finishers ahead of Lerling, Neiser and Boss. Seventh for Anna Fernstedt, eighth for Kim Marmond, and ninth and tenth positions for Yulia Kanakina and Valentina Margalio. And that is it for the first day's action in the Hochsauerland. Join us tomorrow. Women's bobsleigh starts at 9.15 local, 08.15 Greenwich meantime. We will see you then. And the two men will be back in action in the afternoon. From me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew in Winterberg, thanks for being with us. Have a safe rest of the day, and we will see you on Saturday morning, bright and early, to kick off. 2021 and the bobsleigh season.